So today we're going to show you how to fix UVs on a hair model uh, or completely redo a hair's UVs, which would be basically the process I'm going to show you, but at a much larger scale. So this is the hair model we're going to be working with today. This is my OC's Super Saiyan 2 hair. There's a couple normal issues that I have to work out later, but that's not what I'm here to fix right now. So... You want to have EMB pack, EMD FPX, all those things. The things you would probably have if you've gotten to the stage where you're wondering, how do I UV? So you want to unpack your hair's EMB. Uh, get ready to un you unpack it. Then you go here. After the model is selected, make sure texture is selected. Hair, make sure that's right. Open that. New. This can be anything. For the sake of this, we're going to be call it UV. We're, oops, we're going to hit open. We're going to find where the hair UV is stored. In my case, it's zero zero Leo underscore zero zero one underscore hair on EMB converter. I'm going to open that. Now, obviously, it's not going to, you're going to see it's not going to look. Well, what you want to do is you want to create, go into create a hemi, position that wherever. You're going to want to create another one. This is for 2.7 specifically. There will be differences if you are using 2.8. I think the lighting is automatic. So you just create two lights. I put them like this so I can see the entire model bright at all times and hit material. So now it'll show you the model's hair UVs. So as you can see, there are some issues here, 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 and here. This is from when I edited the model to make it Super Saiyan 2, I removed some polygons and I never bothered to fix the issues that the model had. I removed polygons, I created my own, that kind of thing, which tends to break UV maps. So what you're gonna wanna do is open surface mode, this one right here, and select the polygons that you are currently needing to edit. Remove the doubles. If it's only, remove the doubles when you have things selected and when you know that's all one section. Otherwise, it won't look right. So you go up here and you click UV editing. So once you're in the UV editing menu, you'll have to scroll back into the model. Mine was already set up because I have it set to do that. You'll have to scroll back into the model, hit this here, and then turn material mode back on. Now, numpad 5 on your keyboard. This is what it looks like by default. But if you hit numpad 5 on your keyboard, this it'll make it a bit bigger. And you can no longer scroll through the model. You can actually zoom in as much as you need. Very useful. I don't think that can be rebound either. So once you get the hair model in here, you can see, obviously, this is the issue. It's like this, but it shouldn't look like this. So when you get to here, you want to highlight it all, hit E. So that'll unwrap it. That'll unwrap the model's UV. And never do this when the whole thing is selected, unless, again, you're redoing the whole hair. You don't want to do that. I'm only trying to do little bits and bit, little bits and pieces of it, so we'll do that. And so that was also supposed to be part of this. Grab that too. All right. So what you want to do is uh, shrink S. To S, to S shrinks. W will open this to auto align if you want to straighten the lines out. Don't do that with everything selected. Only do that with, say, this. Control Z does that, whatever, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. S to shrink, and you could fit it nicely over the little thing here. So if you ever need to precisely move one of these on an axis, see so obviously when you hit G, you right click and you hit G to move it around. But obviously if you hit it on an axis here. Uh, you want to move it like on the Y or X axis. You click click it, right right click, and then this little arrow up here will set it to move on just that axis by, by one. Very useful tool for moving a lot of polygons at once and you need them to keep a thing. You need to keep it straight line. So we're going to fix this one as well just because it doesn't look right. And every time you'll have to uh, reload that unless you hit this little this little button down here, this little pin button. No matter what, it should always come back to this image. It should not leave this image, period. I'm going to put it on this one here. Now, dictating what's going to look good typically on a hair piece, like how this one has two lines, this one has one, it's really up to your preference. I started to just kind of shove them around and 
guess. You obviously don't want a bunch of them being two lines, and you don't want a bunch of them being one line. But in the end, it's really up to you and what you like. If you like them all being the same line, that's absolutely fine, and you're okay to do that. Don't let anyone else tell you otherwise. So we're going to quickly... I'm going to use these ones here, just because... There, there we go. So now, obviously, now I need to edit these ones here. I typically do try to do... If the if they're bigger sides, I will try to do two lines. Like, see, this is all, like, one line. And then it says two. If they're bigger, they typically get the two lines for me. Or three or four. That's really just a dependent on what I'm editing at the time looks like this is one so it's gonna get one line or maybe two because it's a side bang and it might need a little bit more attention so these are curved out like this and it's to match identical to the model that's exactly how the model looks but if you wanted it to say curve like to turn the UV to turn you edit it the UV portion because you can move these without actually affecting the polygons directly so enable to make them bigger or smaller the lines uh, if you want to make them up here wider or thinner you stretch it out like that or alternatively select it all hit, hit S and then hit X and then X and then Z which is all of them and the S and then Y is height so you can do that generally with even even with the actual models themselves you can do that very useful when trying to resize things on a specific axis but you're having an issue doing so so we're gonna put that about right here it doesn't really matter it's a part of the model you'll literally like never see so i don't really care and oops, so the resize tool is a pain in the ass it doesn't always work correctly but it's something you have to live with if you're using blender well, me specifically, I don't, I don't know. It might not happen to everyone. Happens to me though. And make that wider because it doesn't look right with it as thin as it was, or with it as big as it was. And now I have to fix a couple more polygons, so just bear with me for a second while I fix these. I'd cut the video, but I don't feel like editing this, and it is what it is, I suppose. And you know what, this will help you get like a, a feel for the process, as you can see. It's it's a, it's a mind-numbingly boring task. It's definitely my least favorite of all the tasks, but it, it's, it's not hard. It's just annoying. But a same can be said for a lot of the process of making a character. Like, not a hard thing to do. And now... All, if not most of the UVs that were a problem are now fixed. There is probably still some issues here or there, but I don't really care. Because it's just a model that's never really Nancy, but the issue, it was pretty big. So, that's what that looks like. And uh, that's basically all you have to do. So, once you get it done, you can delete these now. They're no longer needed. Turn off material mode. You're going to want to open your skeleton back up, depending on the version of EMD to FBX you're using. You just... Bam. I'm using Darius, so that's why I do this. I use it for models. People use the other one as well, but I use this one. You export it with the export settings. Slop, slop it into model tools, or wherever your export path is. Mine, it's obviously going to be different for everyone. Export. Then you're going to want to turn it back into an EMD. You're going to want to open up Xeno Viewer. Do that for you because it'll pop up on the monitor that is being recorded. You'll want to drag the model into Xeno Viewer. Turn on Game Roster Shading. And there you go. Now it no longer has that weird black spot that it did right here. And everything's all good to go. You can do this with any hair. Uh, sometimes they'll have more than one. EMB set, you'll want to make sure you're, the one you're fixing is the one that is the one, EMB. 
Uh, I make all my hairs 1 EMB because multiple for a hair is just dumb and I hate it. But that's this is how I do it. You could you might do it a different way. Some other people might do it a different way. Someone might call me stupid for this way. Whatever, this is how I do it. All in all, that's basically it. And see you later.